In this video, we'll go over the recent claim regarding the supposedly unexpected steep wound angles among the Vegas shooting victims. We'll first show simulation results, then we'll discuss how steep wounds relate to the alleged attack from helicopters. Then we'll go over some general points regarding locations in the festival area, as well as statistical sampling. Recently, a series of videos made a claim, that steep wound angles, present among some of the Vegas shooting victims, are supposedly evidence of an attack from helicopters, given that the angle between Paddock Suite and the festival was roughly 17 degrees. First a comment. The video in question incorrectly uses percent signs when discussing degrees. This is a degree, this is a percent. A road gradient can be expressed by a percentage, but degrees and percent are not the same thing, and should be kept apart. To analyze the wound angles, we'll use the already introduced 3D simulation. Since we're dealing with randomness, each simulation will consist of multiple runs. Normally, we'd avoid showing human figures and wounds, but there's no other way to analyze this problem. To demonstrate the wound angles, the results will be shown on a single human stand-in figure. Here's how it works. All wounds in the simulation, regardless how and where the body was positioned, will be accumulated, transformed in space, and shown on a single upright figure. Here's how one simulation run looks like. Again, the red lines are fatal, the yellow lines are non-fatal wounds. The first test is of all people standing, with no ricochets. Here's the resulting distribution of wound angles. Positive values mean the entry wound is above the exit wound, and vice versa. Red boxes are fatal, yellow lines are non-fatal wounds. As expected, the angles cluster just under 20 degrees. The video in question shows 17 degrees as the angle between Paddock Suite and the festival area, but this is the angle to the center point. The shooter targeted the area closer to him, which is why the average angle is a bit higher, just over 18 degrees. Now a test of all people standing, with ricochets turned on. The ricochets add a smaller cluster of angles near zero, because ricochets travel not far off the ground. The average wound angle for a ricochet is slightly under zero, because the initial phase, when the bullet is rising, has more energy, and thus is more damaging. The ricochets cause proportionally more non-fatal wounds compared to direct impacts. Now a test with ricochets on, and half of the people crouching. This adds a widespread random group of angles on the right. With half of the upper bodies now being more parallel to the ground, direct impacts and ricochets can enter from much steeper angles. Even a perfect 90 degree angle is possible, though not very likely. The tests show that steep wound angles are easily explained by ricochets and people not standing upright. According to the claim, the fact that some wounds show angles steeper than the angle from Paddock's suite imply an attack from helicopters. Let's explain why it isn't the case, point by point. First, if people were shot from helicopters at a steep angle, then why aren't most, if not all? of the wounds at steep angles. Why do we have only a few steep wounds among the 58 victims? If bullets came from helicopters at a steep angle, then all bullet impacts on the pavement and objects would reflect this angle. Since no investigator mentioned this anomaly, this would mean that all investigators on the scene must be in on this conspiracy. How is this conspiracy maintained without leaks? The claim also shows very steep bullet paths close to 80 or 90 degrees. Did they also come from helicopters? If so, then the helicopters would have to have hovered directly above the festival grounds. We know from videos shot outside the venue, that this wasn't the case. Let's think this through. If there are very steep wounds, but there were no helicopters directly above, then people must have been leaning to receive such wounds, even from helicopters. But if we admit that people were leaning, then why do we need helicopters to explain any steep wounds, instead of just people leaning? In terms of steep wounds, what do helicopters explain that leaning doesn't, besides being an unnecessary complication? Now let's go over two general points that the author of these claims misunderstands. 
When discussing wounds, the author refers to locations where people were, quote, killed. They're not the same thing. These are all different locations, where wounds were received, where a person passed away, where a body was located by police, and where a person was pronounced dead. We're discussing wounds, so we are only concerned with the first case, not case 3, or sometimes 4, which is shown on police maps. Just because 20 deceased people were left on the ground near the stage, doesn't mean that other people received wounds elsewhere. The LVMPD report makes clear that it only shows locations where bodies were found by cops, and that the bodies had been placed there by others. We know for sure that wounded people, possibly fatally, were carried out of the area in front of the stage. The only person known to be fatally wounded outside of the venue was Melissa Ramirez, known from the CCTV video. Another general point, going back to the men-to-women ratio. The author doesn't seem to understand when statistical sampling is valid. The author thinks that because the gender ratio of the 20 deceased people left on the ground matches the gender ratio of the audience, it means that those 20 people are statistically representative. This is false. A sample of 20 is too small to make any judgment about several thousand people near the stage, regardless of what the sample shows. Let's illustrate this. First, a statistical calculator shows that a sample of 20 from 6,000, has an error of about 22% either way, that is the gender ratio could be anything between 33 and 77%. This is too wide to make any judgment. Let's illustrate this with video clips. This is a recently posted clip showing the audience near the stage. We can use frames from this clip to create a single composite image, with as many visible faces as possible. Counting people, we get 18 women and 11 men, for a women to men ratio of 62%. Let's compare ratios. Raymond Page video shows 56% women. Among the deceased left on the ground near the stage, women are 55%. In the old bar stool clip we've just shown, women are 62%. So which of the two random samples is more representative of the audience targeted by the shooter, the deceased, or the audience near the stage? Answer, we don't know. The fact that the ratio among the deceased is closer to the gender ratio in the audience doesn't mean anything, because women may have been 62% of people near the stage, in which case the stage sample would be more accurate. Simply put, neither sample is big enough to make a judgment. Here's another way to demonstrate insufficient sample size. In the last episode, we've shown a very short, random excerpt from the Raymond Page video, just for reference. Let's simply count the first 20 to 30 people we see in that excerpt, using two frames, and taking care not to count the same person twice. We get 18 women and only 8 men, that is, women are 69% of this small sample. So does this sample of 26 people accurately represent the total of 382 people in the Raymond Page video, where we see a 56% women ratio? No, because the sample size is a bit too small. Let's now apply the exact same logic to the sample of 20 deceased people left on the ground. If 26 people are not enough to accurately represent about 400 people in the Page video, then 20 people certainly aren't enough to represent 6,000 people in the area targeted by the shooter. The fact that the women ratio among the 20 deceased happens to be close to the ratio of the audience, is the result of pure chance, not valid sampling, and is thus meaningless. Here's the takeaway lesson. You don't accept sampling results because you see numbers you like or expect. You accept sampling results when your sample is big enough.